Ah, uh, yes, indeed. A very big hello and welcome to the Great Ocean Road Beach Volley Fest preview show. We cannot wait for this. The Great Ocean Road Beach Volley Fest. It's happening in Torquay, 23rd of November to the 4th of December. And it's a pleasure to bring you this preview show. We're going to be speaking to Olympians on men's and women's side of this fantastic tournament. The best teams in the world all converging on Torquay uh, and a lot on the line to get us started. Uh, and to tell us what this is all about, uh, the CEO of Beach Volleyball Australia, Andrew D, is with me. And so too is former Olympian Bakara Palmer as well. Hello to both of you. Hey, Sam. Good Hi. to be here. Well, let's get started with you, Andrew, first. Um, tell us what the Great Ocean Road Beach Volley Fest is. How did it come to be? Well, it's, uh, it's a festival of beach volleyball down at Torquay. We've got three events uh, uh, lined up in one program uh, on, on Elephant Walk at the, uh, the bottom of the main street of Torquay, just near the water. Uh, the Pro Tour, the Elite 16 World Volleyball Beach Pro Tour event, is, uh, is, is part of, the, is part of the, um, the program, the Challenger event, uh, Pro Beach Volleyball Challenger event as well, and then we've rounded out with the Australian Beach Volleyball Tour event on the 4th of December. So uh, 32 countries coming to Australia to play beach volleyball down at Torquay uh, against the best that we've got to offer. And given that Australia has the greatest beaches uh, in the world, picking one, I'm sure, would have been a really difficult task. But you've chosen an iconic venue, and we saw the, the, the Apostles and the Great Ocean Road. I mean, uh, could we have asked for a better spot? No, I don't think so. I actually just recently did a trip uh, through there from Melbourne back towards Adelaide, and it is such a beautiful part of the world. The, as you say, the beaches are beautiful. Um, the sand is lovely. I think I'm really excited for our international visitors to come and see such a beautiful part of the world that um, they probably wouldn't see otherwise. Well, Bakari, you've done all the homework on uh, who the teams are, who we need to be keeping an eye on, who the major threats to our Aussies are. But, but Andrew, the, the three different events that are going to make up uh, this Beach Volley Fest, just take us through the format. The tournament starts on the 27th with a qualification for the uh, Pro Beach to a Challenger event. So that's like the second tier event within three tiers of World Beach Volleyball. It's a, a, a program for the next level of development and, and aspiring athletes to break into the top 16. Uh, that then is followed on after a day's break on the Monday, the uh, Elite 16 event, which is the world's best. It's like the Grand Slam of tennis coming to Australia down there at Torquay Beach. And so we've got qualifications starting on the, on the 29th of, uh, of November and through until Saturday night the 3rd, where the best beach volleyballers in the world, Olympic gold medalists, silver medalists, bronze medalists, Commonwealth gold champions, they'll all be there at Torquay to finish on that Saturday night on the, th uh, the 3rd of December. And then we've got, in, in, in uh, parallel to that, we've also got a, an Australian beach volleyball tour event kicking off our summer. So just down the road, there's going to be 10 courts on the beach, plus the main stadium, uh, up at Elephant Walk to uh, to host the finals of the Australian Beach Volleyball Tour event that is going to be, as I said, in parallel with the with the international events. So across the course of the show, we are going to be catching up with our, our beach volleyball superstars. So uh, Maria Faye Altacho Del Salah is going to join me. We're going to have a chat to her. We're going to speak to our Com Games gold medalist Chris McHugh and Paul Burnett. Uh, you're going to preview the teams that we need to be keeping an eye out for. But um, Chris, the uh, Andrew, sorry, the the um, the, the festival itself, I mean, the word festival conjures up just more than beach volleyball. What else can we expect to see when we venture down to Torquay? Oh, we've got a huge lineup of entertainment. You can get into, a, into the grounds, uh, into the, through a ground pass to see a huge lineup of stage entertainment. A lot of the acoustic bands playing down there uh, at, at Elephant Walk with uh, family events, family uh, jumping castles and everything else that they do, lots of food vendors. There'll be four beach volleyball courts, the main stadium with 2,000 seats around it. But the ground pass will get you into see court two and three and, uh, and four, uh, the warm-up courts as well. So there's plenty of action on the volleyball courts you can see with the ground pass. Plus, if you want to go and see the, the action on, on centre court, you can uh, buy a ticket there and, and, and see what it's all about. Now, for those who can't make it in person, how can they follow the action? How can they make sure that they can participate uh, even if they can't turn up? Yeah, well, for the, for the two weeks, from the, from the very first day to the last day, KO Freebies will be taking every match uh, that, that's on offer on, on centre court. So there'll be wall-to-wall -wall volleyball and KO Freebies. Just, uh, I think all you need to do is put in your email address and it's all there for you. 
All right, let's have a look at the rundown of the tournament, uh, the breakdown of each week, the challenge series into the uh, Elite 16, just so we can get a, a view on exactly how the pathway uh, to, well, to winning uh, is going to play out. And this is where, Bakara, you're going to be uh, taking us through uh, and leading us through what we can expect. So um, an Olympian yourself, you've played against the very best in the world. You know this sport better than any. Um, Talk us through uh, the champions that we're going to be seeing uh, and some of the, the stars that will be uh, lighting it up. Yeah, absolutely. There is, on both the men's and the women's side, we have a, a pretty stacked draw and sometimes we don't see that in Australia. It's yeah. a very long way to come um, and at the end of a season, sometimes, sometimes we don't get the best teams. But this year, um, I'm very excited to say that we do. We have the Olympic bronze medalist from Qatar for the men. They'll be here and, and looking to sort of assert themselves on the competition, I think. Um, and then obviously our women, we have Maria Fay and Taliqua as well, and they're going to be very hard to beat at home. I think there's something that's very special about playing at home and you get a bit of extra energy and um, that's, that's going to be really exciting for them. We also have a new combination coming out of um, the USA with Kelly Cheng. So she recently been playing with Betsy Flint. Um, they've had a lot of success uh, and just recently decided that they were going to make a change. So... Uh, Kelly now is, has changed partners. She'll be playing with Sarah Hughes. This will be their first tournament together. Uh, and I, from what I've actually spoke to Kelly during the week and her main uh, intention for this team was that they wanted to win an Olympic gold medal and, and she believes that this is the team to do it. So this will be their first tournament. Um, recently, they have played some juniors before, but this will be their first senior event in a while. Um, we obviously then have our other Aussie Olympians, Nicole Laird, um, an old partner of mine, and she's teaming up with a youngster... Uh, Alicia Stevens. Uh, this will be their first tournament together. Uh, they've been training really hard up in Queensland at the QAS and I'm really excited to see how they go. So Olympians everywhere, world champions everywhere. I think it's going to be an incredible uh, week of action. So there's a purse of $300,000 on the line as well. So there is plenty to play for, not just the prestige. There is the prize money uh, too. Uh, any standout recent results from, from our top teams that are going to have them in good form coming into this tournament? Absolutely. Yeah. Chris and Paul, I'm really excited to watch them play, obviously winning their gold medal uh, at the Commonwealth Games. They also narrowly missed a podium in, in Morocco earlier in the year. So I know those guys, as always, are training really hard down in Adelaide. And again, Aussies at home are really hard to bet against. So I think they'll be really exciting. Um, also on the men's side, we have Isaac Carraher and Mark Nicolaides. Uh, they are a younger team. This is their first season doing a full world tour. Uh, I think they've clocked up about 16 events so far. Uh, and have still got a couple more left for the season. So they got a top 10 at World Champs earlier in the year. And from what I've seen, they're, they're kind of the giant killers. Like, they're, they come in, they're a bit under the radar. Not many people know of them, but they've had some really big wins and some really big results. So I'm really excited to watch them. Um, and just give us a little, uh, a, a little glimpse. Of, we've got some up-and-coming Aussies, too, uh, who've had a couple of breakout seasons uh, as well. Some names that we might not know as familiar as we do with Chris and Paul and Maria Faye and Taliqua, but some other Aussies we should be looking out for. Yeah, definitely um, Isaac and Mark are going yep. to be a, a big force, I think. Um, also one of the youngsters coming out of Queensland, Alicia Stevens. She'll be teaming up with Nicole Laird, having that, that Olympic experience under yeah. her belt. And I'm really excited to see their... They're very um, dynamic players, very athletic. I know they've been putting in a lot of hard work with, with Margot Wiltons up in Queensland. So I'm excited to see them. And um, I, I believe there's 21 Australian teams um, playing over the course of Volleyfest, which is unheard of. I, I think it could possibly be some sort of record for the amount of Australian teams. So I'm sure there's a few there I haven't mentioned, but um, if, you're, if you're walking past and see an Aussie team, absolutely stop and cheer. All right, well, let's have a look at the Great Ocean Road Beach Volleyfest men's side of the draw. This is how we're, we're starting and these are the names that we're going to be seeing uh, in action, the, the best of the best. Absolutely. Obviously, Chris and Paul, um, our boys there, Isaac and Mark, um, and then also Tom and Zach. So they, they've been playing a few events this season as well. Again, a very exciting breed of volleyball, mm. very athletic, very long. Um, and then obviously James and, and Solly there. They're a younger team training down in Adelaide at the moment and and looking very exciting for, for what's to come. I think Solomon just won a, a Sassy Award last week. So he's, um, he's, people are seeing him and he's, uh, he's an exciting talent out of Adelaide. All right, let's have a look at the women's side of the draw as well and, and just some of the teams you've already highlighted and just some others that um, are be worth circling in our program guide. Yeah, absolutely. With obviously um, Hughes and Cheng, we mentioned them before. Um, any, any of the teams out of China, to be honest, are always really competitive. Their depth... Um, of teams is, is incredible and, and they'll be one to watch. Also not a long way for them to travel. Same with the Thai team. Um, 
us, us Asian teams are really used to travelling for 24 hours to get to a tournament. So when there's an event in the Asian region, we're always happy about that. Um, who else have we got there? Yeah, Emily Stockman and Megan Craft. Um, they're a newer team as well. Um, the, the Kiwis there, Alice and Shauna, they actually just recently won the uh, Asian Championship. Actually, um, beat Marie Faye and Taliqua, which, which I don't like we, saying we when there's a. We, we, we won't talk about that. Yeah, in just a moment. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but they're a really exciting team. They're, they're really solid. I've, I've played against them quite a few times and they're always very solid, don't give you a lot of errors and, and make you have to win it. So they'll be, they'll be definitely very exciting to watch. Um, and the Vanuatu team's one of our, one of our closest neighbours. Uh, they've been playing for a really long time and have a, a really strong um, program in Vanuatu. Um, so that'll be exciting. And obviously, Alicia and Nicole and, and Georgia and Jasmine, who are, are um, in the same squad up in Queensland. Uh, it's great insight, uh, Bakar, and we, and we greatly appreciate you providing it. And one of the things, that, before we have a look at the Elite 16, one of the things that it really standing out is for those who might be the passive fan that comes in and out of uh, beach volleyball around Olympics or Com Games, the, the, the balance of power around the world of beach volleyball, so we always used to associate with just, oh, the Americans and the Brazilians would be strong and, the, and maybe Australia as well. But now when you, you know, China, Norway and, and countries like that, um, it, it's phenomenal. It just shows you the growth of the game uh, internationally. Absolutely. I think there's, there's a lot of talent pathways that have been created and established around the world. And I think we're seeing the, the product of that in a lot of younger athletes coming through onto the world tour and, and giving it a bit of a shake. There's, there's, no, um, there's no comfort anymore for you know, having years of experience and feeling like you know what you're doing because a team will come from nowhere and all of a sudden they'll be in the top five in the world. So it's, it's really exciting. And Andrew, from a national point of view, then when you've got the, the, the you know beach volleyball sort of exploding and growing in the way that it is, I'd imagine that it helps participation here as well because you look at the potential to represent your country, travel the world, um, and play in tournaments here, there, and, and everywhere. It's a it's a global sport. Volleyball is one of the biggest sports in the world. It's played in all sorts of places, and uh, beach volleyball allows for the smaller countries to play because you only need two on the court. Um, this is part of a campaign for Volleyball Australia to bring the world of beach volleyball to Australia. Um, this is part of a three-year run into 2025 where we've won the rights to host the World Beach Volleyball Championships in Australia in 2025, leading into, of course, the Commonwealth Games in 2026. So this run into 25, 26 and then 32 is so important for us and bringing the world of beach volleyball to to Australia to enable our young athletes to compete at home in front of their family and friends and get that experience at home is really super important for yeah, us. Yeah, the whole idea of if you can see it, you can be it. So to have this exposure and repetitive exposure to beach volleyball is just a, a, a massive boom uh, for the sport itself. And now, this is what it's all about though, the Elite 16. Let's have a look at the men's side of the Elite 16 first up. So, Bakara, these are our Elite 16 teams that are, that are coming in. Um, you've already pointed out a couple of them. Um, and just some others that you, you have been impressed with in the build-up to the tournament. Yeah, obviously the, uh, the Qatarian guys there, they're very, very dynamic. Um, they won a bronze medal at the Olympics. They're going to be exciting to watch. And the, um, the Swiss guys at the bottom there too, they've, they've been playing a very long time. We have a Swiss, um, one of the Swiss coaches is now an Australian coach, so that's always good to have a bit of insight on some of the teams. And again, the Italians. So they've had a bit of a mix-up um, in terms of their partnerships this year. Um, always very energetic and lively <laughs> and play a very... Uh, uh, expressive? Yes, that's a good Thank word. You. Very <laughs> expressive style of volleyball. Um, so they're always exciting. Um, Karen Buller has the, has the uh, sky ball serve, which he's become very well known for. So if there's a little bit of wind around at Torquay, we could expect to see that. So what does that mean for someone watching who might not understand what that expression means? A sky ball serve? When you see it, you'll, you'll know it when okay. you see it. Uh, but it's, it almost looks like it's going to be an underarm serve. Um, and then it turns into a really, really high serve with lots and lots of topspin. And the idea being, if there is some wind, um, and if maybe one of the one of the players on the other side is having a little bit of, bit of a hard time, you pop this ball up, and it gives them way too much time to think about it. Um, and more often than not, it either hits the sand or it's a it's a shanked pass. So that's his uh, that's his go-to, and it's it works pretty well for him. That's one of the parts that I love about watching beach volleyball. There's a lot of mind games that go on. Uh, the women's side of the Elite 16. Let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so we have Taliqua and Maria Fay. And then we've got a lot of Americans. So again, it's a it's a reasonably close tournament for the Americans. It's only one flight over, um, so we can expect a lot of a lot of good things from them. Nuss and Cloth uh, are reasonably new to the tour. They've had a really successful college career, 
uh, and come over um, onto the FIVB and have got a bunch of wins under their belt, a lot of experience, a really exciting team in, in the way that they just kind of get it done. Like they're, they're always really solid, always really consistent. Um, and then Julia Sood and Isabel Schneider, they're a, they're a new team as well. I feel like that's all I'm saying, everyone's a new team. Uh, but Julia's got some experience at the Olympics um, and they've recently switched up. So this I think will be their third tournament. So um, again, the Thais, the Chinese, um, all of these teams, you know, they're in an elite 16 for a reason. They're, they're solid teams um, and they'll give, they'll give everyone a good run for their money. Beautifully done. Great to get that insight uh, from Bakara Palmer. You were a junior world champion, uh, London Olympian. Uh, so it's great to be able to get that insight uh, from you. As we move our attention now to the stars of the sport that we're going to see in action, and it's an absolute pleasure to be joined by uh, one half of uh, our, well, second-ranked uh, women's side coming into this tournament. Uh, ever since they got together in 2017, after the Rio Olympics, they have been on a phenomenal run. It sort of kicked off in Tokyo where they got silver, and since then they've just been able to, to medal time and time again. Uh, silver at the uh, Gold Coast Com Games before the Olympics, silver at Birmingham. They've had a massive 2022 season. It's an absolute pleasure to be joined by one half of the partnership, Maria Faye. Thanks for joining us. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, going well, thank you. How are you? Look, I'm uh, all the better for speaking to you. The Great Ocean Road Beach Volleyball uh, Beach Volley Fest, 23rd November to 4th of December. How excited are you for this tournament? It should be an absolute belter. Yeah, super excited. And we don't really get the opportunity to play at home much in front of our family and friends. So. It'll be such an incredible time. Um, my whole family will be there actually for the first time. Um, my dad hasn't really ever seen me play, so and he will be there. So, um, yeah, it'll be so much fun and it'll be super, super special. Well, we have to speak about that. So the family coming over, uh, your father seeing you for the first time, I believe there's a bit more happening for you personally in and around this time as well. So how exciting a moment, how special a moment, how beautiful a moment is this going to be? Yeah, it'll be it'll be amazing. Um, so um, yeah, I'm actually getting married the following weekend. So my whole family's come over from Peru, and um, yeah, it just worked out really well that the event was the week before, and we um, they had the chance to be a part of it. And like I said, it'll be my, it'll be the first time that Dad's seen me play since I was eight nine years old. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be a very very special moment for all of us. Well, and speaking of special, uh, Beach Volley Fest, it's going to be the first major international beach volleyball tournament in Australia since Gold Coast 2018, uh, where you guys got silver. So a chance to be back at home, on home soil, home crowd, uh, taking on the best in the world. How do you prime yourself up for that? I mean, what's, is it the extra motivation? Um, does it make it just that little bit more important? How do you prepare? Yeah, it actually has been a while since we've played at home, which, you know, it will make, it will make it even sweeter. Um, look, we, we treat every event the same, um, but being at home, we obviously get that little home advantage. We get the crowd on our side and everyone cheering for us. Um, and, yeah, look, I think playing at home, it is, it is a different feeling. You know, you, you kind of feel like you've got, um, yeah, all the love from everyone right there and... Um, yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's a feeling, it's, diff it's hard to explain, but um, in that regard, we'll be very special, but I think we'll, we'll stay very focused in the fact that we're treating, we treat the, all the events the same way. Now, Maria Faye, you and Taliqua came together after the 2016 Olympics at Rio, and since then, you've had a phenomenal run of success, and especially this year as well, um, just building off the silver in Tokyo at the Olympics. What do you put your success down to? And what makes this partnership um, such an, an effective one, such a potent one? Um, yeah, T and I have a very special connection. Um, it's very easy to play together. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been, we're always on the same page, you know, we want the same goals. Um, which makes it easy straight up and um, yeah, it's super fun. We play a very unique style, um, which I don't think it's, you know, it's not something that you can just play with anyone. So that makes it very special and, and the trust that we have for each other. I think it makes, it's one of the factors why we're, we're a great team and we play well together. Um, yeah, you know, it's just, it's just, it just works. It's very natural. Um, it's very organic um, and yeah, we're, we always have fun. So that's one of the important things as well. 
Well, you can always, when, when you can tell any, when you ask anybody about their partner, whether it be in business or sport or in life, when you mention their name, if that person smiles instantly, then you know there's a great connection there. You smile <laughs> the moment that I mentioned Taliqua's name, I know that you've got a great relationship. So for you guys in the preparation for this, um, when you're looking at the Elite 16 teams that are coming out, who do you circle? Who are you most wary of? Who, should, who are you looking out for the most? And who do you put the most planning into? Oh, I think, I mean, it's Elite 16 for a reason. So it's going to be tough right from the get-go. But I think it's important for us to put the energy on our side of the court. We know every team that we're going to play is going to be tough. Um, but, yeah, it's important to focus on what we're doing on our side of the net and not give too much energy on who we're playing. Um, you know, you often can get caught up and, and kind of create all this energy, like unwanted energy, um, I, about the other team, so it's important just to to stay really focused on what we were there to do on it, on our side of the court. But yeah, no doubt all teams will be very challenging, so we've got to make sure we bring our A game right from the start. Well, Maria, Faye, we can't wait to see you in action uh, down in Torquay. I'm going to have to ask you this though: which is going to mean more to you, claiming the title here or making sure that everyone says I do at the wedding? <laughs> question, but um, it'll be amazing to get that gold on home soil, for sure. Uh, we wish you all the best for the tournament and for the wedding as well. Your family coming out here to see you play, to see you get married. That's all incredibly special. So congratulations for that and a preemptive congratulations for what I'm sure will be a successful tournament for you and Talika. Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, what an absolute joy to catch up with Maria Faye, uh, one half of the dynamic duo. The other half, Taliqua Clancy, we were lucky enough to catch up with her a little earlier on. Taliqua's been good enough to jump on the line with me. Taliqua, hello to you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a nice little introduction. Well, hey, listen, you, you, you put the resume together. I just read it. That's, that's all that's <laughs> happening there. Um, you guys have been had a fantastic year. Um, how have you seen it from your point of view? Yeah, it's been yeah, it's been really great. It just feels like you know Maria Faye and I just keep getting stronger and stronger. Um, you know, this year also is important just to find that mental emotional reset for us. But so we're in our preseason phase now. Um, but Torquay is one highlight for us before we start Olympic qualification next year. So it's really awesome to have all the world's best teams in in Australia and and to be going down to Torquay. It'll be awesome. What does it mean for you personally to have an event of this magnitude, uh, not necessarily in Queensland where you're based, but but certainly on Australian sand? How big a deal is this? Oh, it's absolutely huge. And you, people don't realise too. Everyone's like, oh, you must get all these amazing beaches. But we actually rarely ever play on a beach. So <laughs> I'm happy to actually finally bring the world's best and be like, you know what, this is actually what a beach looks like. And Australia <laughs> has some of the best beaches. So that would be... I know <laughs> that would be pretty huge, but my mum's also um, making the trip down too, which is awesome because, yeah, because we're always travelling and we never really play at home. It's nice to, for her to, to come down. As a proud Indigenous woman too, uh, Willy Willy uh, Goring Goring, um, you're the first Indigenous Australian to, to play beach volleyball in an Olympics. Um, these events we, we've been speaking about uh, are so big for just the next generation of beach volleyball player because if you're if a show like this comes to town what it can do for participation and inspiring the next group of kids that want to take to the sand is so crucial. But, above, you know, even more so than that for you in the role that you have um, as an Indigenous leader, how important is it for you personally for, for this tournament to be here so that more young Indigenous kids want to play beach volleyball? Oh, it's, it's really special, you know. There's so much happening in the next 10 years in Australia and it's really the time now... Brisbane 2032 coming up and we got Com Games as well in 2026 in Victoria. So it's really a huge time for First Nations really just to, you know, stand proud. Uh, for me, it's representing as an athlete, which is which is awesome. And I hope I can encourage, you know, more mob to go out and participate in sport. But also, you know, it's a time too to showcase just our culture, uh, dance and art. So, yeah, bringing this all to Australia is really special. And I suppose, as you say, on the flip side of that, having people from so many other countries around the world be able to come to Australia and for them to experience all the things that you've just talked about is just as important, isn't it, to tell those stories on an international scale? Oh, it's going to be so huge. And that excites me so much that I'll be able to really show everybody our beautiful culture. 
we know how amazing it is, but it'd just be awesome for them to embrace it because traveling the world, there's one thing I do know is that when they fly over, they'll all just completely em- embrace that moment. It's a really special part that sport can, can bring. So why, um, why do we need to make sure that we're all getting to Torquay 23rd to the 4th of November, Beach Volley Fest, um, the, the music, the food, it's going to have everything that it, we, when you think festival, this is going to be it and more music, food, sport, um, beach, it's going to have it all. But for you, what, what, why is it so, why is this a must-see event? I think that's, like you said, everything that you just said then is beach volleyball. Beach volleyball is just such a great spectator sport. You can all get involved. It literally is a party at the beach. You'll see Maria Faye and I in Centre Court. We will be dancing. Like, you will feel (laughs) that energy from from everyone. So it's just, yeah, come down, bring the family. Never watched before. Just you'll have the best time, I can assure you that. So, you know, be there. I love it. Uh, couldn't have put it any better myself. Talika, thanks so much for being on the show tonight. Uh, thank you for what you and Maria Faye um, are doing for, for beach volleyball, the way that you represent our, our country, um, yourselves and Chris McHugh and Paul Burnett uh, are just doing such brilliant things in the sport and getting as many eyeballs on the sport as possible, which is such an important thing for the future and the sustainability of any sport. Um, we can't wait to see an action on home sand. It's going to be magnificent. Great. Thank you. Can't wait to see you all there. Uh, big thanks to Maria Fay and to Luke. We're looking forward to seeing them. The Great Ocean Road Beach Volley Fest, Torquay, 23rd November, 4th December. Um, Andrew and Bakara, we want to talk now uh, about the entertainment because you mentioned it earlier that a festival needs to be exactly that. It won't just be what's happening uh, on the courts for the beach volleyball, but it'll be what's happening off. And you mentioned the food, the entertainment. So who can we expect to see um, regaling us uh, at the event? Well, we've got a whole list of local and uh, Australian, Australian acts. Uh, Taylor Henderson is headlining the, the list and, uh, of course, Taylor recently uh, closed the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, so he's uh, headlining the list. But there's all sorts of different acts. Uh, I understand Murray Cook, from, formerly from the Wiggles, is bringing one of his bands oh, to, 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 to Torquay with some funky tunes. And, of course, there's uh, the, the Kite Machine, uh, Maddie May, Flynn Gurry. There's a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of acts going to be there f- uh, from morning till night, really. So, Bakara, do we know if, um, with Murray Cook's band, um, they're called uh, the Soul Movers... Mm. We're not, we're not just getting a, a repackaging of the Wiggles, are we? I mean, this is a different sort of musical venture I mean, would, for would Murray. it be so bad if we did? I feel like the, uh, the Wiggles at Volleyfest would really would go off, I think. <laughs> um, no, look, it's, it's going to be a really eclectic mix, I think, of, of yeah. music. And I'm really excited to see the festival atmosphere really come to life. This is something as, as players that we're really used to seeing in, in Europe and uh, in North America. And I think that it's going to lend really nicely to... The, the vibe and the energy of Torquay to bring in some music, some incredible beach volleyball atmosphere and people can come in, tickets are only $5 per day to come in and, and sort of lap it up all day and move from court to court and grab something to eat, listen to some music, watch some great volleyball. Hopefully the weather's good. It, it goes hand in hand, doesn't it, Andrew? The idea, you know, beach volleyball, that, that, the, the vibe of that with great music and great food. You mentioned the food trucks. But it is so important for events now to realise that you are more than just the sport itself. You are the event. You, you know, people's time and, and, and disposable income is a lot more finite than it maybe once was. So an experience is what you're offering and you guys certainly are. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly right, Sam. Uh, it, it's it's more than just what goes on on the court, mm. and the experience for the families is really super important. That we get that day long experience where you can come in, spend the day, entertain your family, but uh, also the the venue it lends itself to that. It's a spectacular venue. We looked long and hard up and down the surf coast for the money shot, and over the top of the the main grandstand out to Danger Point is is just breathtakingly beautiful. So the, the atmosphere is great. Um, we don't really get a lot of beach volleyball on the beach and so this is as close as we get. We don't have to worry about high tides. We're up on the, up on the landing, up at the park there, but uh, it's, it's going to be spectacular. So the list of domestic music talents includes Cam Henderson, Jack Botts, uh, the Kite Machine, as you mentioned, Steph Strings, Andy Forster, uh, the Osakuma Beats, uh, Maddie May, <laughs> Flynn Gurry, Levi Anderson, Savage Honey, uh, Sunadan and Armadeus Wolf, the Pierce Brothers you mentioned before, and we spoke about Murray Cook's new band, The Soul Movers. 
Um, as we said, plenty for the kids to see and do, local food vendors. It really is going to be everything that a festival um, is and should be. Uh, pizza trucks, gourmet burgers, coffee, of course, uh, and craft beer too. You will want for nothing at the Great Ocean Road Beach Volley Fest. But let's have a listen. Let's hear from one of our acts. Just a little taste of what you can expect musically at the Great Ocean Road Beach Volley Fest. And we look forward to that and many other great acts. It's going to be a festival in every sense of the word, but it is all about what's happening on court and our big chance, or one of our two big chances in this tournament, are our Com Games Gold Medalists. It's an absolute thrill to be joined by Chris McHugh and Paul Burnett. Uh, team, hello. Hello. Matt, how you going? Look, very well, but I just haven't won a Com Games gold medal and uh, sadly never will. But uh, you guys have. Um, firstly, congratulations on that. Um, how does it still sit with you to hear that uh, expression, Chris, um, Com Games gold medalist? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, still pretty surreal for me. Uh, it's my second, uh, Paul's first Com Games. Um, look, it was a phenomenal tournament for us and it's been a phenomenal year and we can't wait to come back to Australia and, and play for the first time in a very long time. So you guys came together after the, the 2020 Olympics, which were in 2021. Yourself and Damien Schumann, Chris, uh, competed there. Damien's retired. Uh, and then you and Paul have teamed up. Now, how did that come about, Paul? Yeah, uh, so like you said, it really came about when Damo retired and uh, my partner at the time was injured as well. So we s it made sense to join forces for Asian Champs. And so it's actually about our one year anniversary at the moment as well since we came together so well, happy anniversary thank you very much and yeah so we started with asian champs last year and we managed to have quite a bit of success and we won that beating the olympic bronze medalists in the process and so we thought well that went pretty well so let's see how it goes this year and yeah, we've managed uh, to bond quite well and have quite a bit of success this season as well now i love how you say that you had a little bit of success you won your first tournament together if I'm not mistaken is that right yeah yeah no, no. <laughs> you put it pretty well <laughs> <laughs> so you go from that and now you can say that you're a com games gold medalist how does that feel yeah like Chris said it's pretty pretty surreal um to to put that experience into words is tar is pretty hard and though it feels like a long time ago now and that was the last time we've competed so look looking to, to build on that when we when we get back in action in a in a couple of weeks so look we're really happy with that com games but looking forward to more uh, you've got a silver at the uh, Kusadasi uh, Beach Pro Challenge in Turkey as well. So success has sort of come pretty quickly uh, for you guys. So, uh, Chris, the build-up now to, to this event, you must feel like you're coming in in some pretty good form. Yeah, look, as Paul said, we our last competition was Com Games. We've taken a good eight weeks just to have a bit of a pre-season block. Uh, we go to Iran later this week and then come straight back here to Australia. So to the two... Two events down in Torquay, which is going to be critical for us in the lead up to uh, Olympic qualification next year. Uh, we're really looking forward to competing at home and using the uh, Asian champs next week as a little bit of a precursor to then get the results that we really want in Torquay in, in front of family and friends and, and the volleyball public of Australia. As we were speaking to Andrew a little earlier, this is going to be the start of a, a few years of sustained elite level beach volleyball that's coming to Australia. For you guys, um, being you know the, 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 the poster boys, if you like, of the, the sport uh, on the men's side, how important are events like this to make sure that we're bringing through the, the, the next generation and get the participation up? I'd imagine events like these and then what's to come after are really important in getting that spike uh, in participation for beach volleyball. Yeah, I think Paul is probably more the poster boy than me at the moment. Uh, <laughs> look at him, he's a good, big, good looking rooster. But it's really important for us to have that continuality of events. Um, it's yep. really exciting to host Com Games 2026 in Victoria and down in Geelong and, and the Surf Coast. And 
Uh, big thank you to Vic Gov for jumping on board and, and supporting our great sport. Um, I know myself, I've got a couple of school visits down there in the next couple of weeks and, and hopefully get the, the, the young kids of the Surf Coast getting playing a great game. I mean, we've both had incredible careers so far and, and got to travel the world and, and see so much. And it's a sport that's maybe not so big in Australia, but around the world is, is massive. And the opportunities that you have to, to go to the Olympic Games, go to World Championships is... Uh, is something that I hold very dear and, and ultimately if, if one of us can, can play in 2032 Olympics and then, you know, it's, uh, it's really good. And Paul, this is going to be your first elite level international tournament uh, on Australian sand, I should say. Um, how special is this for you? Oh, super exciting. Uh, great, great to play on home soil and got my parents from Perth are going to be coming across for the Elite 16, so to have them there and to just be able to do it in Australia in front of home fans is super special and we just want to put our, our best performance out there and get a few, get a few wins and, and come out with a good result. Well, I'm sure you both will. I'm sure you'll do yourselves. Uh, the, the sport uh, and the country, very, very proud. We can't wait to see you in action. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Uh, Chris McHugh and Paul Burnett. And let's just have a little look at some of the scenery that they'll be taking in the beautiful expanses of the Great Ocean Road and the beaches in and around Torquay. There's no better location, is there? Fantastic to have Chris McHugh and Paul Burnett with us. You'll see them in action, the Great Ocean Road. There it is in all its splendour. Iconic part of Australia, iconic part of Victoria. No better spot to hold Beach Volley Fest Torquay. 23rd November, 4th December. Now, Andrew and Bakara, you guys are back to tell us the who, what, where, why and how. Andrew, let's start with you. The key dates, please. So it all kicks off with qualification on the 23rd of November, but finishes under lights on the 3rd of December. Uh, followed by some, uh, some great acts and entertainment there. So we'll have gold, medal matches, other lights of the Elite 16 on the 3rd of December, as I said, followed by the entertainment. And Bakara, where can we get tickets? Tickets are available at beachvolleyfest.com.au if you want to get them early. Uh, they'll also be available at the door. Uh, so for a ground pass, for kids it's only $5, for adults it's 15 and there'll be some centre court tickets available as well. So we hope to see everyone down there. Absolutely. We cannot wait for this. So just put that into your schedule, put that into your calendar. If you're still rolling a diary, make sure it's in there as well. The Great Ocean Road Beach Volley Fest. A big thanks uh, to these guys to my left, uh, Andrew and Bakara, for giving us all the information. A big thanks to Maria Faye and to Lequa, and also to Chris and Paul, uh, some of our very best. And we're hoping that they can claim the ultimate. We're hoping that we can see you there as well. All the information's up on the website. This is going to be a phenomenal event and we hope to see you there.